What if I told you there was more to the story behind game changing events? Get ready for my new podcast, That Moment with Damon John. Every Tuesday on the Black Effect Podcast Network, we'll jump into the personal stories of some of the most influential people on the planet, from business moguls and celebrities to athletes and artists. Join me every Tuesday for That Moment with Damon John on the Black Effect Podcast Network, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever. Wherever you go to get your podcasts. Brought to you by Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Hi, I'm Dr. John White, WebMD's Chief Medical Officer and host of the Health Discovered Podcast, where we bring you fascinating stories and unique perspectives like our recent episode where we break down the myths to uncover the facts of type 1 diabetes. A lot of people, very well-meaning people who cared about me, just thought that it was caused by diet or can be cured by diet and exercise. Especially right after I was diagnosed, people saying, what what was it that you ate? Or are you going to have to change your diet to get rid of this? There's still a lot of, you know, people see me pick up some kind of dessert and they're like, oh, should you really be eating that? Or thinking, you know, if they give sugar-free things to people, that that's helpful. Listen to Health Discovered on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're pulling back the curtain to reveal women overlooked in their own lifetimes or in our historical accounts of the eras in which they lived. We're talking about the activists, thinkers, leaders, artists, and innovators history has forgotten. Without today's womanikin, the Mongol Empire might have fallen into disrepair. She ushered forth a new era for Genghis Khan's descendants through her unique style of diplomacy. And she wasn't even a Khan herself. Let's talk about Sorhak Tani Beki. Sorhak Tani was born late in the 12th century into the Karyat tribe in central Mongolia. Her family was powerful. It controlled territory and was often embroiled with its neighboring clan, led by one Genghis Khan. In 1203, Genghis Khan launched a surprise attack and overtook the Karyats. In order to unify the two tribes, Genghis and Sorhak Tani's father decided their children would be married. And so, Sorhak Tani became Sorhak Tani Beki, Genghis Khan's daughter-in-law. Sorhak Tani and her husband, Tolai, had four sons together. Women in Mongol society were generally involved in most aspects of Mongol life. As nomads, they took part in battle, helped relocate the community, and managed livestock. They were also teachers, advisors, regents, and tutors. Sorhak Tani held remarkable power. Tolai commanded his men and his children to follow Sorhak Tani's command. When he died in 1233, she took over her late husband's role as a leader of their community and the military. From the start, she was a well-respected and well-loved ruler, even if she was a bit out of the norm. For starters, she refused to remarry. The sitting great Khan offered his son's hand, but Sorhak Tani turned him down. She wanted to focus on raising her sons. And, as a single woman, there wouldn't be another Khan bloodline edging in on her son's claims to the throne. Even after refusing his offer, the great Khan sought out Sorhak Tani's advice on administrative issues. According to some stories, he never disregarded her opinion or strayed from what she said to do. And Sorhak Tani's advice was... unusual. In a society that usually valued force as a means of expanding power, she preferred diplomacy. She got the favor of allies by giving families and troops gifts. She reminded people of their allegiance to her late father-in-law and late husband. And when all else failed, she reminded people who they were dealing with, a mother and a widow who wielded great influence. Sorhak Tani passed her lessons on to her children. Though they'd all grow up to be warriors, she also made sure they were diplomats and leaders. She made sure they were taught useful languages from around the Mongol Empire and she stressed religious tolerance. Sorhak Tani herself was a Christian, an outlier in the Mongol Empire. But she donated to Muslim leaders and institutions and welcomed Taoist and Buddhist monks. In 1241, the sitting great Khan died. He'd chosen a successor, but his eldest wife wanted her son, Gayuk, to rule instead. The only way to settle this issue was with the Kuril Tai. 
a meeting of the Khans. Sorhaktani and her sons arrived quickly in support of Gayuk. But the eldest and most esteemed of the Khans, Batu, was far away and in ill health. Gayuk grew tired of waiting. His mother and her allies broke tradition and named him Khan. His first order of business was to storm out with a large army to confront Batu. Sorhaktani feared it would lead to endless bloodshed. She sent a message ahead to Batu, an ally, warning him of Gayuk's plan. Somewhere along his way to Batu, the new Khan died, and the scramble for the throne began again. In the years since the great Khan's death, Sorhaktani had only become more popular. Her life's work was coming to a head. She knew the support she needed to win the throne for her sons. She sent her eldest son, Monka, to meet Batu and secure his vote. It was a no-brainer. Batu was indebted to Sorhaktani. He gave his vote to Monka. Meanwhile, Sorhaktani gathered her allies across the empire to attend the Kurultai. Her careful creation of allies, family adherence to Mongol tradition, and discipline in teaching her children leadership paid off in full. In 1251, Monka was finally elected Great Khan. Sorhaktani died the following winter, but her legacy lived on through her sons, who shaped the future of the Mongol Empire. They'd go on to expand the empire's territory and introduce systems to ensure its future wealth, like taxation systems and an investment in agriculture. You may also recognize her second son's name as the leader of China's Yuan dynasty, Kublai Khan. All month, we've been talking about women behind the curtain. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Tune in tomorrow for the start of a brand new theme. Talk to you then. Congratulations to Infosys Limited, first place award winner for innovation in customer experience at the 2023 Unconventional Awards presented by T-Mobile for Business. The Infosys tennis platform is driving groundbreaking innovation for fans, coaches, and athletes. With T-Mobile 5G, Infosys can analyze data seamlessly. This means their AI shot of the day, which isolates data from each shot based on criteria like stroke difficulty and point cruciality, can translate into an immersive fan experience. T-Mobile for Business congratulates Infosys for their innovation and unconventional thinking. No one likes to talk about money. Am I saving enough? Can I buy a house? Am I paying too much in taxes? Will I be able to retire? What if you could unlock insights about your finances in less than five minutes with a clear picture of where you stand today and where your money can work harder? Now you can. Visit facet.com to take the free quiz and get your financial wellness score today. That's F-A-C-E-T.com. This ad is sponsored by Facet. Facet Wealth Incorporated is an SEC registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. Have you had it with toxic pet odor products that don't really work? Try the revolutionary new odor eliminator, Poof. Poof eliminates odors instantly. No harsh chemicals, no tacky perfumes. Poof dismantles odors on a molecular level, turning any organic odor into clean, fresh air instantly. And not just pee or poop stink. Use it on stinky pet toys, their beds, even on stinky skin folds, ears, and around eyes. Because it doesn't contain harsh chemicals. Get the amazing new pet odor eliminator everybody's talking about. Go to poof.com today. That's P-O-O-P-H dot com. If it's not poof, it stinks.